Greetings from Jim, AG6IF. Well, today I want to show you something that's pretty neat. It's a couple of levels, a couple of layers, but it starts off with uh, the um, broadband ham net. It uses a WRT54 and some Ubiquiti routers. It creates a, uh, it's a put together by a group of hams, www.broadband-hamnet.org. And generally speaking, um, the routers, the Wi-Fi routers, form up and make a mesh network. Here's an example on their website. So it's a self-healing, self-learning network. And um, it's getting a lot of attention as far as uh, delivering uh, network capability for emergency responders and so forth. So um, please check that out. But uh, what I want to show you today is I've got a small mesh network running here at my QTH. I've got five nodes, and uh, the login or the, the the status screen shows them here. It also kind of gives you an idea what the link quality is. So I've got uh, my call sign dash one, two, three, four, and five. So you can place a server on here and uh, some workstations, and you could uh, maybe uh, edit some files collaboratively or whatever. But uh, I've taken a second uh, project and tried to build that into the mesh so that it works good. Sorry about the finger there. Uh, the second project is called Asterix. It's a phone system. It's a VoIP phone system. And I have a tab here. This is my Asterix status screen. Uh, so uh, it shows you uh, I've got two extensions. All right, so you can run an Asterix phone system with a, with a small switch uh, switch with a few ports on it, plug in some VoIP phones, and run your own little phone system at your home or whatever. That's And that's not too bad. That's kind of neat. It runs on a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Um, my Raspberry Pi is actually in my mobile, and one of my... Uh, one of my... Um, mesh network nodes is in my mobile so it's outside in the driveway and uh, all of my all of my uh, mesh nodes can see each other um, my Raspberry Pi VoIP phone system is running on node number one okay so I just wanted to show you here's what a Raspberry Pi with a case looks like it's a small $35 computer running Linux so what did I do? I've got a couple of telephone extensions. I'm using HT701, uh, the Grandstream. Uh, so anyway, what we have here is I've got two nodes with me. I've got, I've got one right here. It's running the uh, broadband hamnet software, and I've got a Grandstream VoIP phone interface connected to it. And if you follow this over, just got a plain old telephone. I also, just to make this video easier, I brought another one of my nodes. This one's usually outside. It's outside in the weather. It's been working fine for a couple of years. It's a little faded. But here's one of my nodes. This is um, node number four. It also has a VoIP phone interface connected to it right here. Now all this runs off 12 volts. For, for right now I've just got it running off wall warts, but you could put power poles on it. So what I want to show you, so I've got the spare room here, I've got two phones. I've named them uh, 100 and 101 is the extension number. So if I take this, uh, this one, get a dial tone on there, and I'm going to dial 101. All right, this one's ringing now. So now I've got a, a telephone call going between extension 100 and 101. So the f the uh, the pathway basically is that the the telephone interface, the VoIP phone system right here, talks to the Raspberry Pi asterisk server that's running on one of the nodes. Happens to be out in my car in the driveway. It talks to all the other nodes, this one. So these two phone extensions, even though they're side by side, they're on separate nodes. 
they're on separate nodes on the network, and they can be anywhere in the network, in the mesh network, and they're still going to find each other. So this mesh network can get pretty large. In the case of uh, the the sample screen, that's I believe that's Houston. So the mesh nodes will uh, locate each other, and they'll create pathways between them. So you could put a VoIP phone system, Asterix, on one of the nodes, and um, you could put individual extensions, VoIP extensions, these little grand stream uh, video VoIP phone extensions aren't that expensive, 30 or 40 bucks. You could actually create your own broadband phone system for emergency response. I can hear these two phones are feeding back a little bit. Uh, basically, uh, you can create, you know, obviously you can create feedback. You can hear that. So the pathway is to the to the interface, to the mesh. The mesh connects to all the other nodes that it can hear. It located the other, it located the server, the VoIP phone server, asterisk. It knows where this other extension is located, so it routes the call. So it's a long way around, even though they're side by side. Uh, the, the asterisk phone system has voicemail, it has uh, three way calling, it has a whole bunch of features. Uh, it, can it can tie into your Google Voice, it can deliver email with an audio link of the voice message, wake up calls, you name it. It's a very, very cool uh, Asterix open source phone system. But tying it into the broadband hamnet mesh network system is one of those killer apps that that broadband hamnet really needs. So yeah, you can put a server up there in a few workstations, share information, share uh, uh, LibreOffice files, PDFs, and so on, but you can also use it for voice with an Asterix phone system. It's not that hard. I did spend quite a bit of time getting this to work, but once you know how to get it to work, like anything else, it's easy. So the main thing on the server, wherever you plug in the server, you have to uh, reserve the DHCP address, like I've done here and give it a name. Once the name is known to the mesh network, in my case, RASPBX, all the other nodes can get to that. You also have to forward two ports for VoIP, 5060, both UDP and TCP, um, and 5004, and that's done on the port forwarding screen in the broadband hamnet uh, system. So right here, that's important. And right here, that's also important. And that's done on the port forwarding screen. So that service becomes available to everyone else in the mesh. Now, if others had a mesh that could see my mesh, my five node mesh, one, two, three, four, and five, they could also share the services. Uh, I've got my web presented, because I'm at, when I'm here at the house, I have internet connection, I can route across there. But uh, we can also put telephones in there, and using the Asterix Telephone VoIP, Voice Over IP open source system. So uh, the marriage of two very, very cool and important technologies right here for you. And I hope more people can get this to work. It's pretty neat. So if we can get a, a local mesh started, if you get a local mesh started, start picking up WRT54 Wi-Fi routers. You get them online. Version 1 through 4 works good. The GSGL and the, and the G. 5 and later do not work. You can also get Ubiquity hardware. It's kind of recently uh, adopted, recently w worked out. But uh, the WRT54s are everywhere. Garage sales for a couple bucks. Start picking them up. Download the software from Broadband Hamnet and start building your mesh networks.
for disaster services, EOC, whatever. Uh, it's really neat. And I've got a whole group of people here in Southern California. We're scoping out, looking for that hardware, and um, trying to bring something to bear on this. So uh, thank you for watching. AG6IF, uh, real happy to be able to show you the broadband hamnet married up with the killer app, Asterix. Thanks for watching. 7-3.